Oh, now you're running hide. Yeah, see how you're going to be. <laughs> well, thank you everyone for joining in on the most wonderful YouTube channel in existence with the with the heathen author that sells more books than any other heathen author in the world. Yeah. And I did it, and I broke every single rule in the book to do it. And I can tell you how as well. You know, uh, I have a, uh, a text here to discuss on the grow galder, grow a spell. It's interesting. But there's, um, a, you know, Melissa was right. There is a lot going on in my life. And I'm sure that the same thing is going on in a lot of people's lives. You know, this week has been a week of radical, radical change in my life. <laughs> I'm living in a different scenario, living, living in a different place. Got my daughter enrolled in another school. Dealing with trying to help someone over a hump in life that I'm not real sure I have the tools to do. Even though I can do it for a lot of other people, sometimes I'm like most other men. We come across a situation in life and we realize, we look at the challenge in the person near to us and the challenges they face and we realize I have the tools to help literally thousands of people around the world, but I don't have the tools necessary to help this person. That's, that's a common thing for men in this world today to find ourselves unable to bring our best efforts to bear on those closest to us to provide what we need to do so we can, as we perceive it, win. And see, that's, that's not always how it is. <laughs> so like I say, I find myself in new living conditions, new surroundings. My daughter's in a new school. In the middle of all that, I managed to pull out 50-something hours of work this week. You know, the, um, the amazing thing about this life, the amazing thing about living a heathen life, we get... We get busy. I've heard it said that if a heathen is living his life right, if an officer true is living their life, they live about five to one to a regular person because we're doing stuff. We're out there making things happen. We got, we're thinking, we're reading, we're studying, we're working. We're, we're doing our best to live those nine noble virtues where we're living life finally. And I think for a lot of people, it is really a finally. I get to live life so we embrace it and we enjoy it and we celebrate the struggle of it all. What a courageous state of mind. What a courageous state of being. <clears throat> no matter what seems to be going on, I find myself blessed in a number of ways to find myself surrounded by individuals who have, who have encouraged me with, uh, with love to say nothing, to, to, to say the least to be there and support someone going through whatever challenges might be happening in life. And through the whole time, there are people still reaching out to me with their own troubles. And there's no better way to deal with what's going on in your life than to get out of yourself and help someone else make it over that hump, figure it out. Human decency. And, and I think a lot of it boils down to is we give a damn what happens with this faith and spirituality that's saved? I, I can't tell you. It's just countless people whose lives have been saved because they decided to grab life by the nose and whip its ass. I'm tired. I'm not going to live this way anymore. I'm going to try something different. <laughs> so I come across one lady told me something very special. She, she was telling me about love, how we deal with people we come across, we, we plug into them in different places and they ain't always the right place. I kind of associate with that. I'm going to plug into him for a minute right here. We're going to be friends. And then we kind of realize that, that, that might be kind of toxic. I don't know if I want that. So we've got to cut that cord and then we kind of 
ooze all these negative feelings out. And then we connect over here and then we connect over there. <laughs> and we never really figure out how to connect with someone with just that simple heart to heart, mind to mind connection of people trying to make it through this world. It seems like we've been conditioned to expect a condition for our relationships with the people around us. I think one, and that's, I think that's another one of the greatest things about this whole period of transition for me is I've, I've come to realize <laughs> some of that stuff I've been writing about is really real and it's really there. And these people are not expecting anything. They're just saying, go on, brother, we got you. Holy cow. You know, and I watch what my friend is going through and the people that were hanging around her, every one of them stabbed her in the back. Wow. To think that I used to live life like that on a daily basis and call it good, call it important. I was somebody. Mm -hmm. As soon as you're down, they're going to take a chance. They're going to take a shot and they're going to step over you. <laughs> In the middle of all that, I'll be danged if one of the ladies, that uh, the lady that owns the spiritual rose, Teresa Hunt, and she's a wonderful lady. Um, she gave me a venue to talk live for several weeks. You know, it didn't really do her store much good. I don't know, maybe she probably sold a little bit, but, <laughs> but she supported my efforts of her own, you know, it was of her own heart. She just came out and did her best. So here you go, Brian, let's help each other be successful. Well, that means something. I reached out to her the other day because I got other big plans going. I got something else going on too. Her nephew had been in prison in Colorado. He'd been the gothi for his, you know, the whole time he's been in there, she had no idea that he was following also true in there. That guy talked to another guy. That guy reached out to me. That guy's got a little foundation. I got a question to like a nap and a sandwich. I thought, what kind of horseshit is this? A nap and a sandwich. But I reached out to Cameron who runs it. Cameron has taken our principles and some other information and built a recovery program that the state of Colorado is wanting him to use to help parents get their children back. The state of Colorado, this man is using our heathen principles to help people get out of this drug addiction, not by getting on your knees and saying I'm powerless, but by reprogramming our brain with these heathen principles. And I'm like, holy cow, that just walked into. So I got all these people giving me all this support. And as I sit back and relax and quit fretting and quit, and quit worrying and quit wigging out like I'm prone to do, you see, it's okay if a man like me starts throwing a fit and gets mad. You know, I can stand there and cuss with the best of them. <laughs> the funny thing is, is once I kicked back, and realized it's all going to be okay, amazing things began to show up in my life. Amazing things coming from other people in Austin Troop. And we don't hear about that stuff nearly enough. We don't hear about the things that Austin Troop is doing to change people's lives. We all keep waiting around, looking around for expectant phenomena. I saw a raven, I saw a fox, I saw a wolf. Um, I heard this bird song, I had a dream. We're all looking around for this, I've read this book, I understand this knowledge, these, these symbols, these ideas, this life of expectant phenomena to justify our radical departure from societal norms. And yet all of a sudden, when the, it's time for the rubber to meet the road, we look around at the people we've surrounded ourselves with and we realize, holy shit, that's really where it's at. I'm surrounded by really, really good people. How can you not win with that in mind? <laughs> so I find myself, and I hate to say it, <laughs> but I'm going to, I find myself humbled by the compassion that's been demonstrated to me <laughs> after I've demonstrated it for so long to so many people. What a real neat thing. You see, that's the kind of stuff that changes the world. Not the big grand understanding of whatever conspiracy theory we might see, whatever fear we might wanna, that's running our lives or whatever 
thing we might be afraid of is going to take something from us, but the ability of us to stick together, to support each other, to give a damn what's happening to those people that are trying to follow this way of life and stepping up to the plate, not bowing, not breaking, keep moving forward. I respect that when I see that in people. I respect it a lot. So I see, I, I see, <laughs> I see that happening now. So like, like I was saying, <laughs> I find myself in the midst of this also true life, surrounded by some of the most amazing people I could never imagine. I couldn't, if I had to go pick, I, I need that person in my life. I need that person in my life. That person looks pretty cool. And <laughs> I couldn't have picked a better group of individuals to be around me and supporting me. And it all comes from this, this thing that so many people want to label with whatever they can to prevent or justify its existence. So uh, with all that in mind, I come out here and I thought, okay, what am I going to talk about? We're going to talk about a foundation of faith. Well, isn't that the foundation of faith? Because I, I think once you begin to realize that's going on in your life and you look around and you realize people really do care, people really are standing there with you, people really are supporting you, all of a sudden you realize I've got a foundation of stone from which I can do just about anything I need to in this world. <coughs> what could I come up with to top that? Well, the first one I come across was the grow galder. And the grow galder is a mother offering protection for her son. And it's an interesting tale, it's not very long. It's Vipdag, which means the swift day. He says, wake thee, grow, wake mother good. At the doors of the dead, I call thee. So his mom's passed. Thy son bethink thee, thou badest to seek thy help at the hill of death. So this is kind of an aspect of Utasita, of sitting out on the grave mound, trying to unite with the ancestors. I see people in, in also true today, and rightfully so, they should be seeking out these ancestors. But I wonder sometimes if we're doing that because we find ourselves surrounded by individuals that are not the kind of individuals that are going to help us enrich our lives. I mean, we really need to stop and think about that. Am I drifting off over here to the left or to the right because I find myself alone and I need to feel special again? Or am I, is this a legitimate part of growth? Because if the legitimate part of our growth has us sitting out there all alone, howling at the moon without the kind of people we need in our life to support, foster and encourage us, the kind of people as Kevin Smith says, the why not people. You know, everybody has an idea or a dream and they say, well, I think I'm gonna go in his case, make a movie. You find yourself surrounded people say, why do you want to do that? Nobody else is doing that. Who do you think you want to do that? Why do you want to do this? Why do you want to do that? Surround yourself with why not people. I want to make a movie. Well, why not? Okay. Um, and then they go and support you to do that. I want to write a book. Why not? Why don't you go do that? I find myself surrounded by people that say why not. I feel pretty good about that. <laughs> so the swift day is sitting at night calling on his mother. Grow a spake, what evil vexes mine only son? What baleful fate hast thou found that thou callest thy mother who lies in the mold? And the mold being the grave mound, the, the, the casket or whatever she happens to, and has left the world of living. Now the woman, so Svitnag, the swift day says, Woman false has brought me a game. And that, for she bade me go forth with fair and mingloth the maid to seek. Bag's stepmother, since obviously his mom is gone, 
is search for Mingloth. The necklace means the necklace clad. Mingloth means she's got a necklace on. And that's how it's, um, that Mingloth is really or the Brisingaman gem, the Brisingaman's necklace, his necklace, which some speculate are the fires of human intellect. That's a hell of a challenge. See, Otter sought Freya, and he got a wolf cut loose on his ass because he was just screwing off. <laughs> but his mother says, long is the way, long must thou wander, but long is love as well. Thou, what thou have, if the faith will give. Now, in all the things I just said, there has been time past this situation, pattern of life, that I have looked at it as long, unending, never ending. How long is this going to go on? How do I stop it? And see, this is the part where people begin to think about taking their own life. They start saying, I don't know what to do. I can't change it. And they're wandering. They're wandering alone. <coughs> Odin wandered. As long is the way. All roads lead to that. All roads lead to Rome. All roads lead to that one doorway of death. Long is the way. And the best thing we might ever do in this world is escort those people closest to us with a little compassion, kindness, and love to help them move along for a day or a season or a lifetime to that door we all have to cross through when we meet the sun facing goddess. <laughs> long must thou wonder. You see, Odin, it never says how long he had to wander before he made the decision to sacrifice himself to himself, before he decided to sacrifice that part of himself that kept him alone. How much of the things that I say, feel, think, or do are designed to keep me alone because that's a very safe place, isn't it? It's a very safe place if I'm alone, if I don't risk feeling anything, if I don't risk showing some compassion and helping people move forward. I can wander alone for a long time in the woods. I can become a forest dweller and never have to cultivate those gifts that I've been given when we decide to share with another person those inner workings of our heart. Even though the Havamal says, that's not how we're supposed to live. You see, long must we wander before we figure that out. And sometimes that loneliness can be a soul-crushing experience. <laughs> but we're offered hope in this as well. She says, but long is love as well. What a beautiful thought. Long is love as well. And when we figure out that sometimes these conditional aspects that we want to determine as love may not necessarily be that, but more of a fear of a denied want. You see, so much of what passes for love in today's world isn't really the kind of love where you plug into someone else in the best way, as was explained to me earlier this week. But it's more of a denied wanting. I want that person in my life because I'll look better if they're there. Whether or not it's good for them is irrelevant, but I want it in my life. <laughs> well, you're not going to be in my life. Well, who do you think you are? Why you blah, 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 cuss them out, run them up, call them nasty names, slander them, whatever. <laughs> That's not love. You see, but love is long as well. What a wonderful thing to think. There are many lonely people out there who are wondering long they have wanted by themselves. What is it that we must sacrifice ourselves so we might understand that the rest of this journey not be one alone or in pain, but might be one of love. That's a scary thing for, for your uh, bearskin clad Viking warrior, <laughs> wannabe ex-Marine hardcore sniper tattoo tough dude. But what else is really worth fighting for? I mean, when you have children in this world, you understand tooth and nail is not nearly enough when it comes to making sure those children are safe. That's an aspect of love. That will last a lifetime if you're not, if you don't screw it up. <laughs> McGraw goes on to say, thou mayest find perchance what thou fain wouldst have if the fates their favor will give. 
Don't the fates show their favor with each person they put in our life? Isn't each person that comes through our path for, like I said, a day, a month, a season, or a lifetime, isn't that a favor? What to do, what not to do? Do we have the courage to address that honestly and openly? Do we have the courage to say, I'm going to love you, but at arm's length, because this is painful? Or come inside and be a part of the inn and garth. You see, there's a real responsibility for love in that. <clears throat> but for people that don't have the tools <clears throat> or people who have been waiting all their lives for someone to tell us we're worthy of that instead of cultivating the idea. When the necklace clad woman, the necklace clad goddess Freya, the one thing she does is remind Otter, you're worth it from the beginning. And that's one of the things it's time for us to begin remembering. You don't have to wait on my permission. We got to remember that from the beginning, I am worth this. What an empowering thought. What a strong, it's just the strongest thing I can think of. When that snaps in a person's mind, I'm worth more than this. I am worth better than that. I can be better. I can be worth more. <laughs> and then realize what that amount is, what the value of that worth is literally has no limit other than the limits of your imagination. Look at what we've stumbled into with this radical ideology of also true. All right, what's the limit here? What's the sky? <laughs> Svitdag spake, charms full good, then chant me mother, and seek thy son to guard, for death do I fear on the way I shall fare, and in years am I young, methinks. <laughs> so he's got this irrational fear of death. We all do. What happens if we fail? What will we become if we go out there and do the very best we can and come up short? What happens if we go out there and build and talk into this relationship and it all goes south? Well, I, I might walk around the world with the word fool written on my forehead because that's what it feels like a lot of the time. That's, when you talk with people like that, that's what they will literally tell you. You walk into the office at work, everybody knows, well, he's got fool written on his forehead. That's not how it is. <laughs> but for your ego, it might as well be death because you're not going to be nearly as cool. You're not going to be nearly as rich. You're not going to be nearly as tough, smart, handsome, whatever you think you are. The old lady says, you're out of here, buddy. I got somebody new. Same thing for a woman. That is a death of the ego. And yes, it's terrifying to young individuals who don't have a balanced and healthy look at that. Grow a spake. Then first I will chant, chant thee the charm oft tried that Ranny taught to rind. From the shoulder or whatever mislikes thee shake, for help or thyself shalt thou have. Ranny and rind. <laughs> rind is the giantess who is the mother of Valley, the one night avenger of, 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 of Balder, Odin's son. Um, grew to adulthood one night and killed old Hoder and Balder avenged. Um, Ranny may well be Odin, but listen to what he teaches her. From thy shoulder, your shoulder, mislikes thee shake one on your shoulder for help or thyself shalt thou have you have to stand up sometimes and i've literally told people this i want you to imagine in your mind's eye close your mind's eye imagine everything of who and what you are imagine standing up from the earth planting both feet as solidly as you can and shaking your shoulders and shrugging all of that nonsense off that you're carrying around as if it's important for the only help you're going to have is yourself. See, you already have inside what you're worth. Shaking that stuff off is your responsibility. So that's a pretty good charm. A reminder that the one person you can rely on the most is you. You have what it takes to shake off 
these misdeeds, these mislikes, these things you decide to carry around that make you feel like you're important, you have what it takes to get rid of that. Then next I will chant, chant thee, if needs thou must travel and wander a purposeless way. <coughs> Isn't that kind of what we feel like sometimes going to work, punching a time clock? Is traveling a purposeless way. We're just moving every day, one day closer to that final doorway of death, just like everybody else. And all I'm doing is punching a time clock. What is that? Is that what we're supposed to be doing? <laughs> the bolts of earth shall on every side be thy guards on the road thou goest. Now, the bolts of earth, she's one of the three norns. Or a dandian skull. So the mother is going to provide this bolt on every side. So you're not going to drift off. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. If you feel like you're on a purposeless way, it's your responsibility to wake up and smell the coffee to be the assistant for thyself and shake off whatever mislikes are on your shoulder. Because you're not going to deviate from that path. There's something here to learn. There's something very powerful for us to understand. <laughs> Some of the best things that I can do whenever I find myself in that situation is stop. I have, that's the best thing is I have a choice now as to whether or not I want to get mad. I can decide to fly into a tizzy in a heartbeat, but I have that choice. I have two or three seconds where I could say, do I feel like getting mad? Do I need to get mad? Is this a fight or flight kind of thing? <laughs> Or I could sit here and calm down and say, okay, what am I supposed to be learning here? That's me shaking my shoulders and understanding that I am my best helper. This is the path I'm on. Let's figure out how to do it. She's helping him get rid of his ego where he should expect grand and glorious divine help because he thinks he's special and reminding him, You've got a path to wonder here. It's time to grow up a little bit and let's see what you can become. Then third, I will chant thee of threatening streams, the danger of death shall bring. Get to hell shall turn both horn and roof and before thee water shall fail. That's a pretty good one. You're not going to drown. Learn to swim. Okay. Don't cross a raging river. The fourth, I will chant thee if come thy foes, <laughs> on the gallows way against thee, into thine hands shall their hearts be given, and peace shall be shall the warriors wish. Let's take a stock of that. If you understand that you're your own helper, if you understand that this path you're on is the one you're set on, so you might learn the most important lessons of life. They're going to be specifically tuned to where you are. If you understand that these Threatening streams are not there to drown you. You're not going to fall. If you understand you're your best helper and foes come thy way, now listen, there's this, like I was saying, you have a decision as to whether or not you want to engage in battle. These gallows, well, the gallows, into thine hands shall their hearts be given. It doesn't say cut them out. It says their hearts be given and peace shall the warriors wish. See, that's the earning of respect between men. That's the kind of common decency that occurs between men who have accomplished something in this world, between women who are confident in who they are and the beauty they express. This is a thing about grown-ups. When you walk into a room, you're not dealing with a hundred punks' egos. You're dealing with men who have gone through whatever trials in life they're supposed to go through, understand that they have what it takes to make it through it. That kind of confidence breeds inspiration. It draws good people into your life. When you, you perceive them as foes, they might put you on the gallows, but you're standing there with confidence and the right and the understanding of who and what you are. Men respect that. <laughs> Peace, shall the warriors wish. So this mother is teaching this wild young kid who wants to go on this wonderful journey, but doesn't think he has what it takes. In so many words, she's telling him, you got this. Grow up a little bit and be what you're supposed to be. 
The other one, this, this one, the fifth of the chant, the of fetters perchance shall bind thy bending limbs. Over thy thighs do I chant a loosening charm. And the lock is burst from the limbs and the fetters fall from the feet. This is from the Havamal. This is room charm. <laughs> then sixth, I will chant thee of storms on the sea, hath might unknown to man. It never shall wind or wave do harm, and calm is the course of thy boat. Also a rune charm. Then seventh, I chant thee, if frost shall seek to kill thee on lofty crags, and fatal cold shall not rip thy flesh, and whole thy body shall be. Another rune charm. Then eighth, thou will chant thee, if ever by night thou shalt wander on murky ways, yet never the curse of a Christian woman from the dead shall do thee harm. So the Christian woman thing kind of pissed a lot of people off, but when this was put to paper, a Christians were generally, res they were regarded by all conservative pagans as emissaries of darkness, which is exactly what they brought. So that's a pretty powerful charm too, isn't it? The night thou will chant thee, if needs thou must strive with the warlike giant in words, thy heart good store of wit shall have, and thy mouth of words full wise. Now fare on the way where danger waits. Let evils not lessen thy love. I have stood at the door of the earth fixed stones, the while I chanted thee charms. Bear hence, my son, what thy mother hath said, and let it live in thy breast. Thine error shall be the best of fortune, so long as my word shall last. <coughs> we would love to ascribe a mother's blessing to this, and I think it really is a mother's blessing to believe in their child has what it takes to grow up and become a man. Just like just like Cone and Rig and Sigurd and Odin, when they become what they're supposed to become and they begin to learn the use of the runes, the only thing that's left out here is the language of the birds. We have individuals who can become what they're supposed to become. And we're kind of in that boat too. So when we look at that, it begins to dawn on me anyway that the wisdom of what it means to grow up and become something more in this life of also true, <laughs> if we look closely enough, we see many different paths by which we might approach that. Everybody's on their own path. Work these rooms in different places in different ways. We're going to find to love above all else to love. Let evils not lessen thy love. Don't be afraid to love somebody. What greater gift could we have than the expression of our heart? Once we've used our minds and cultivated and built our bodies into something worthwhile and become confident in who we are, yeah, it might fail. But if you know what, if you're doing it right, don't be afraid to do it. Don't be afraid to be that man that can love someone whether they love you or not to love them at arm's length, to love that person that's struggling, to love this person over here who's not worth a shit, who probably isn't worth the powder it would take to shoot him. Help him. Give him a hand. It doesn't mean you have to buy into all of his nonsense. It might mean give him, here's five bucks, we'll get a cup of coffee. It might mean, you know, here you go. Uh, but that doesn't mean you got to be absorbed into their game. Okay, let, let evils not lessen thy love. And that's kind of what that means. Let evils not lessen thy love. Don't buy into all the BS that's keeping them down, their own thoughts, which are crippling them. Let evils not lessen thy love. Stand up and be a man. Walk the path. Develop your confidence. Become who you're supposed to become. The understanding of the rooms will come with time as you grow into what you're supposed to become. Let evils not lessen thy love. You can be what you're supposed to be, and you can offer that helping hand and encouragement to those individuals who are most in need without it sucking the life out of you. Because there are people out there that they will just, just suck it right out of you, not think twice about it. Not because they're bad, but because that's all they know how to do. <laughs> I appreciate everyone's time this evening, and I know that's probably no one has ever heard that from this story, and uh, I'm kind of glad that I did it first. I feel good about that. That's my ego, and uh, I, can, I hope you all appreciate that for what it is, because I sure as hell do. <laughs> um, does anyone have any questions on that? Because I would, I would love to discuss it with you, and uh, 
If not, it's at 1020. I know it's late, guys. It just, it was a real busy day. I'm so glad for video, so you can't tell that I smell like a farm animal. So if I'm going to take a shower and go to bed and uh, get up in the morning and grab life by the nose and whip its ass, and we'll try it one more time. <laughs> I appreciate that, Ron. Thank you very much. All right. I can hear you, Chelsea. It's a delight to hear your voice. You know, me and Gable got married. Yes. We dated for seven years. I know. He was very afraid of marriage. Of course. Like, it was a trap. Sometimes it is. <laughs> but we realized, you know, even though we dated for so long, we are not planning on breaking up at all, that we wanted the, the legal benefits of being married of course like kind of like a uh what do you call it uh whatever the marriage that you have when you're not legally married yeah, but we want that we want yeah. basically like right to each other's ashes right to each other's um untimely death like to be in the icu if something happens right one of those rights to each other's person, um, which a marriage give you, and it's only eighty dollars. And right. we make an agreement, like, hey, you know, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But at this point, uh, we've been together for a really long time, and we don't plan on breaking up at all. Right. So I would say to people who are scared of love and scared of marriage, after we got married, like he loves to brag about me as his wife, you know, like, um, right. <laughs> Good. We're getting a, a little homestead and mm -hmm. we're getting some farm acreage. So like we have elevated our status, like in marriage and right. In living in the way of our ancestors, you know, our ancestors would say, you know, get the livestock, get the land. The, the Pennsylvania Dutch would say, uh, you know, kissing doesn't last, land lasts. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my right. favorite quotes. <laughs> so, um, you know, we're getting this land now, and he's going to school, and like, it's been such a positive thing. Um, and he was really scared for a long time, and that's okay, I get that. But I would say, you know, in the world we live in now, um, a lot of people say they don't want to marry because um, they want the person they marry to be the last person they're ever with. Okay, we're not like that. <laughs> right. Like, we made an agreement, like, if this doesn't work out, you know, if we want to break up, we'll divorce, and that's fine. But in the meantime, our ancestors set away in a path for a man and a woman to be together and have the land and have the livestock and have the common goals, and especially, like, the deep spiritual heathen beliefs. Like, I love, like, we talk about heathenry all the time without even realizing it. <laughs> you know, right. it's a part of life. I mean, that's the thing. It's a part of life. It's not something you do on Sunday. I wonder though, there's something else that, that struck me when you said that. I was like, there's something that you said I, about after you got married and the way that you said it about how he talks about you or his wife and you're proud to be his wife. That's an interesting feeling in it, Chelsea, when somebody talks about how special Chelsea is. How, how, yeah, now all of a sudden, there's a celebration of the beauty that's inside your heart. That's a neat thing, and I'm glad that you have it. I really am. I'm glad that you and Gabe will get to enjoy it. Thank you. So do it, because, like, I was <laughs> for people, or even older people, do it, because if you let's, don't like Let's go easy on the older people bullshit. God damn it. <laughs> well, he's in the 50s. I'm almost 40 now. Whoa. But, but because if you don't like it, you can leave. Right, you know, right. It's not the end of the world. I don't know how our ancestors felt about divorce. I'm not planning a divorce, but 
you know, and women uh, are married because you can't get divorced. Fuck that shit. Our ancestors were were pretty <laughs> cutting edge on that stuff. Women's rights. Women had rights to, to see uh, a, a divorce, if you will. They had the right to say hey, this bastard. and see there would be a dowry set aside. So they fall through. She wasn't left and right. She had something of her own. There was a there's a really bit of that because she was still a part of the community. If that didn't work. work out groups where the guy he's done screwing around with her. Well, now she's evil and she's crazy. I'm going to stick around, and hang out with the guys. Let's run this broad off. Well, you know that's not how that works. You know, in this comfortable age we might have back then, she was still an important part of the community. Anyway, I'm glad you talked about it, Chelsea. Well, I'm, I'm glad you shared that. Just for the heathen folk, if you're married for over 10 years and your husband has an untimely death, you get something called death benefits, which is free money from the government. Yeah. And when Gable went to Syria, it really hit me like, hey, we've been together for six or seven years. And I'm, I won't get shit if you die at this point. Yeah. I don't even have the right to your worldly property. We did go and get some special uh, stuff done through an attorney where, like, I had medical power of attorney. But if you get married instantly, legally, you become the medical power of attorney and the power of attorney over your spouse. Yeah. So, you know, this is what I said to him. I said, um... You can back out of a marriage, but you can't back out of an untimely death with your partner. I don't think there's any such thing as untimely. So it's cool. Like we were, it's really been positive for us, and uh, I'm really excited. We're getting chickens and looking at my <laughs> house. So do it. Jump in. You know what? The worst that can happen is you have to jump out. That jumping out part, I've done it twice. It's kind of a motherfucker. I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> There's some hard parts to that, man. <laughs> There's some real hard parts to backing out of that. <laughs> yeah, they can be, yeah. Yeah, that's not, it doesn't ever, yeah. So it might be best to not let evils lessen their love. That might be the better thing to do, huh? <laughs> I am glad though, man. I mean, I'm glad that you and Gable finally did that, man. I mean, that's, and I see that, I see that, I see it in your, I see it in your face and I see it in your smile. I see the, I see yeah. the benefit of what that's done for you. And that's good. I mean, that's, I'm glad he's, I'm glad he's back. Is that's he going to go, is he going to, is he going to go back over? No. Yeah. <laughs> What's he say? <laughs> If he does, we're going to go together. And he wants well, to go You to better not go over there. He wants to go to China to make deals with the people that manufacture the drone stuff. And I'm okay with that. I'll go, and I'll go to Syria if we can stay in the Hussein, which is the, um, you know, the not religious district. The one with the food and the alcohol. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that's where you need to go. But yeah, yeah that, that's our deal. We travel together now. <laughs> yeah, that uh, it's a long flight. And uh, you know what? Doing drones with China. What kind of drones are you talking about? Well, he wants to make drones that uh, you know the kind that shoot. See, there's some State <laughs> Department issues in that, and there there's some clearances you got to get. <laughs> yeah. I promise. But also, you could do like a, a one for civilians that people, well, what we're working on now is like the, a drone that detects, that surveys your land and detects wild animals coming onto your land. With that, the infrared. You could probably sell the fire out of that thing to every hog hunter in this country. Yeah, <laughs> we're kind of like on the entrepreneur thing, like. Dude, man, stay on top of that. Those guys that hunt them hogs, they spend fortunes on night vision and everything else. They probably, yeah. Yeah, you can sell that. You can probably put a $500 yeah. price tag on that and sell the shit out of them. But now that yeah. this is going to be on YouTube, you better move fast. <laughs> oh, no. 
Yeah, he's at OU <laughs> doing the engineering program and, uh, you know, he works independently and I work independently, so. Man, as long as it pays the bills, man, ain't nobody can say nothing. It does what it does. And that's right. <laughs> that's exactly right. All right, well, if nobody's got anything else, I'm going to hop off here. I gotta, I, I'm going to hit it again at 4.30 in the morning and go give it hell. All right, Shay, we'll see you around. You guys take care. Thank you all.